Scott Laboratories presents Drops of Knowledge. In this video, we'll review setting up a module filter housing, product filtration, as well as module cleaning, back flushing, and storage. When using lenticular filters, operators can increase filtration capacity by increasing the number of modules in a system. The number of modules possible is dictated by the height of the housing. A corresponding center post must be used to match the number of modules required. In this case, we'll be working with a housing capable of accepting up to three modules, but we will replace the three high post with a two high post for the purpose of this video and use only two modules. For help in selecting the proper amount of modules or grades, contact your supplier or Scott Laboratories. Prior to filtration, record the lot number and any other pertinent information off of the module package. In order to have flexibility of cleaning options during filtration, we will be using Sites SuperDisc 2 lenticular modules in conjunction with back flush support plates. Prior to removing modules from packaging, guide deflection plate onto port. Place first end back flush plate onto deflection plate. Remove a single module from its box and carefully remove from its plastic wrap. Slowly guide module down center post to rest on top of end back flush support plate. Place intermediate back flush support plate on top of first module. Remove second module of equal filtration grade and place on top of intermediate back flush support plate. Finally, place the second end back flush support plate followed by the top plate. At this point, check all contact points between modules and the bottom adapter to ensure there's no obstruction. Apply tightening nut and spring to the top of the center post. Continue to tighten until spring is rigid and the lenticular module is securely compressed. Do not over tighten. Flat gaskets will seal once compression is complete. Using proper lifting methods, slowly lower housing dome on top of filtration pack. Dome should securely settle on the bottom O ring. Securely fasten dome to base using fasteners. Caution. Only pressure rated vessels with secure fasteners should be used. Open the water line, being sure that inlet and outlet product lines are closed while vents and drains are open. Make sure that while filling with water, water fills to top vent to ensure full wetting of the cartridge. Once the housing is full, open water discharge outlet to begin rinsing. At this point, the filter can also be sanitized, either by increasing water temperature to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 82 degrees Celsius, for the prescribed period of time, or by draining the housing and applying steam. All caution and best practices should be followed when handling high temperature water or steam. Resume rinse with ambient water to bring filter back to room temperature. Some clients may prefer to include citric acid and sulfur dioxide into their rinsing protocol to minimize the potential for papery taste. As with any chemical, contact your supplier or Scott Laboratories for further protocols and compatibilities. Commencing filtration. Drain any residual rinse or sanitation water, then close drains and water discharge lines. Close product outlet valve, and with vent open, slowly introduce wine through product inlet valve. When wine arrives at vent, close vent, and open product outlet valve. Initial differential pressure is likely to be from 7 to 10 psi as calculated by the inlet gauge less the outlet gauge. As the filtration progresses, pressure will increase as solids are retained by the cartridge. Graphically, this is seen as an exponential growth in pressure. As time passes and gallons are filtered, pressure will increase at an accelerated rate. If regeneration for media is desired, such regeneration should be done prior to the knee of the curve or 45 degree tangent. This is typically occurring in wine, beer, and distillate filtration at around 18 to 20 PSI differential pressure. In order to perform a regeneration using lenticular filters, 
it is primarily important to confirm that the media being used is robust for both forward and back flush flows. To initiate a regeneration, drain or push residual product out of filter vessel, closing product inlet and outlet valves. Apply water source to back flush water inlet and crack open the vent. Fully open back flush discharge and begin flow of ambient water. 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, at slow speeds, typically 10 to 20% of product flow rate. It is critical that a back flush pressure is determined by the differential between the outlet gauge and inlet gauge. Never exceed 7 psi differential while back flushing. Continue flush with ambient water for 5 to 10 minutes or until discharge water is reasonably free of solids. At this point, remove water source and replace on forward flush water inlet, which was previously your discharge. With the same valve still open, initiate a forward flush at two to three times product filtration flow rate with ambient water. Over five minutes, increase temperature to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius, at which point continue flow at high rate or reduce rate if hot water is limited. Maintain at temperature for five minutes. Over five minutes, reduce temperature back to ambient and resume high speed flow. Once complete, filtration can resume after draining or pushing water, or filter pack can be disassembled and media stored. For storage information, please contact your supplier or Scott Laboratories.